Hello, I'm Voltaire Tupa sa Move PH. Welcome to Raptor Talk. It's Earth Day and joining us are climate action advocates, um, three of the people behind Now PH. It's a campaign that gathered more than 3 million pledges mm -hmm. which were presented uh, at the Paris Agreement um, Conference yes. um, in, in France in 2015. Yes. Let's start with the new vice chairperson of the uh, Commission on Climate Change, Secretary Vernice Victorio. And joining us also is Paul Pangilinan, the new National Youth Commission Commissioner at Large. And of course, one of the original mm -hmm. members of Now PH. She's now the Executive Director of uh, Yes Pinoy and convener of Now PH, Pebos Sanchez. Welcome to Raptor Talk. Thanks, Walter. Thank you. And congratulations, you just won an Anvil Award, a Gold <laughs> Anvil Award recently. Um, let's talk about the, the campaign first. Um, let's go down memory lane. Um, this was a successful campaign. Um, it was brought to Paris. Um, can you give us a brief um, overview of what was the goal, um, what was achieved, and moving forward, um, what are we going to do? We actually won this award mm -hmm. because Raptor was <laughs> also part of it. Um, the Now PH campaign was actually an initiative led by the Climate Change Commission and, of course, the National Youth Commission. And we had more than 20, 20 institutional um, partners, including Move PH of Rappler. We also have USAID, UNICEF, and other development partners, media, non-government organizations, academe supporting the campaign. I think it was successful because the initial target was just a million pledge, uh, a million signatures, but we were able to reach um, to reach 3.6 million pledges, and um, that success was because of our partners and of course the youth-led and youth-serving organizations on the ground who really help us not only with the online campaign, but with the actual, but also with the actual um, collection of signatures. I recall it was a combination of um, on the ground and yes. online initiatives. Uh, I recall it was a vibrant uh, campaign on yes. online using the hashtag now page, which you can use, by the way, um, you can join our conversation this afternoon. Just use, uh, use now PH and um, we're going to read your questions and your views. Um, um, going back, I recall when I was covering the, the conference in Paris, you were there running around. Um, that day when, when the pledges were presented to a high-level forum mm. composed of prime ministers and other um, officials of other government, uh, governments um, that were negotiating, um, can you give us um, an overview of what happened there? Of the story mm. behind it. Um, the, other than gathering mm. the, the signatures, we actually intended to present them um, as a consolidated expression of support of the Filipino youth to our um, to the leaders of the conference of parties uh, of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, and we were very fortunate because the Climate Vulnerable Forum that was being led then by the Climate Change Commission allowed us to have an audience not only with the members of the CVF but also with the French government, mm -hmm. who sat as the president of COP21, mm -hmm. and so we handed over the plaque. Actually, it was former commissioner at large um, of the National Youth Commission, Ding Dong Dante, who handed over the consolidated um, expression of support of the Filipino Your youth. Your predecessor. Yes. Yeah. yes. But before that, of course, marami po pong nangyari. Um, isa nga po sa mga side story, hindi kami hindi po makaabot yung plaque na iaabot sana ni Commissioner Dong Dante, who is also our founding chairman. Uh, we had I had to go to a, a warehouse far from Le Bourget, France, mm. and bring it back to the convention area. Pero pagdating ko dun, parating si President Barack Obama. Uh. So the streets were all closed. Uh. I had to wait. Sobrang lamig. Oh, nakita kita nung nagtatakbo ka ang, <laughs> ang, ang layo ng, ano, ng mm -hmm. Le Bourget, yung buong stretch oh, dyan. Oh, and malaki din ba? kasi po yung tinurn over po natin. So, lahat po ata ng santo na tawag ko. <laughs> And during the my security check, ang sinasabi ko po, can I and can I, can I um, go before you? Because if I don't make it on time, I will lose my job. <laughs> my president needs this. But of course, um, we were very successful. We were able to um, formally uh, transmit our consolidated expression of support to the French government, and they recognized the effort of the Filipino youth, and they saw it as one of the um, innovative youth 
participation mechanism that the Philippines through the Climate Change Commission and the National Youth Commission have led. Which reflected the movement then, how strong um, the movement then in terms of supporting mm -hmm. the climate agreement. And it was a successful conference. There mm -hmm. was an agreement that was forged. Um, almost all countries signed it. And today, it will now be enforced. It's now for the Philippines. For the Philippines. Yes. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. um, what does it mean exactly when we say it will be uh, effective in the Philippines? Well, we signed it. We signed the Paris Agreement exactly a year ago also in New York in last April 22. Now this year, um, a year after that, we're finally now a party to the Paris Agreement mm -hmm. because it means we've ratified it. Mm -hmm. the, um, our current president signed the instrument of ratification and then it was then um, the Senate gave its concurrence, it's been transmitted to the UN and now it's, we're there, we're finally a party and it's such a historic moment. I think it was so apt the timing that, you know, we're, it's Earth Day and then we're also, it's a year from the day that we actually signed the Paris Agreement and now we're uh, considering also all the work we did to, you know, to put that Paris Agreement into force. We worked very hard, of course, I think you were all there with the 1.5 degrees Celsius goals and something we're very proud of. At least now, we can further advocate for it while there when we're in, when we go to, because we have yearly, in fact, this May, we have um, the intersessionals and then again in November, we'll have the yearly COP, but there's going to be this conference of parties serving as meeting of parties to the Paris Agreement. Bit of a mouthful, but then before last November, we were just observers. Mm -hmm. Now we're actually in the so table. So we can negotiate. We're yeah, part we of the a, negotiating table. We have a voice, mm -hmm. especially it's important now because we'll, we'll be coming up with the Paris Agreement rule book because the Paris Agreement is still very general. And now we have to come up, okay, what are the exact details of how we're going to operate? operationalize this Paris Agreement. The ratification of the agreement would have been a boring exercise if the President did not express his misgivings <laughs> initially. Um, but apparently, the Cabinet prevailed over him. But what exactly happened? Um, how did it change his mind? I understand his misgiving was the economic concerns. How would it affect our economic growth? Um, well, based on his pronouncements, yes, the economic growth and there were, may have been also just some misunderstandings about like some commitments that the Philippines had under the Paris Agreement. So when it was finally explained and I, we went over the legal document, it just said that, you know, we can determine what we want to contribute under the Paris Agreement as long as it's in line with the um, well below 2C and the 1.5C goal. And yeah, so I think after that was clarified, then it was not a problem anymore. Okay. Let's start with the 1.5 degrees Celsius sure. um, cap and then um, the other commitments um, because it's not, it's not really, uh, people are not familiar with the, with the commitment. Um, yeah. What exactly does it mean when we say we're, we are aspiring for a 1.5 degrees Celsius um, well, cap? Well, what does it mean? <laughs> The, the Paris Agreement said that yeah, we will pursue further efforts to limit the temperature increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius goal. The Philippines, together with the Climate Vulnerable Forum, was leading this particular goal because uh, I see, you know, like we're among the top five vulnerable countries to climate change. And that means that for a lot of us, for example, our small islands, we will get hit by sea level rise. And of course, the typhoons um, are, yeah, we're number five of the things the typhoons, you know, how many people how many lives are actually lost from all those typhoons and of course the um, yeah the crops you know the crops are gonna get hit you have food and water security so when i guess when you say that what this 1.5 c means we say that it's we need it for survival and to actually thrive as a country because the impacts on the Philippines will be so much more compared to the rest of the world because the tipping point is three degrees celsius that would mean extreme weather conditions um, actually they say. well there it's even two degrees celsius eh, when the they were trying to put a cap like a long time ago and they were they just came up this the scientists said like okay after two degrees celsius it's uh, it's something that the world cannot anymore handle unfortunately right now if we are to you hit continue on business as usual we're going to hit about four to five degrees celsius by the end of the century so that's totally unacceptable so paris agreement made it to two degrees celsius but even for us the philippines we're like this is not accept we cannot even live with a two degrees celsius world uh two degrees celsius means that we're losing about 98 well 98 percent of our coral reefs are at risk um, our crops will not have any sudden potential lung for adaptation we I will lose about 20% of our water. So these are things that we cannot even accept as a country. So we really pushed hard for a 1.5 degrees Celsius. 
very and ambitious goal. And we're experiencing the, the, the manifestations of this. Like for instance, it's summer, it's hot, but... It's raining. it's raining. And then it's raining and there was an LPA or tropical depression. I know, uh, it's, I so think it's, and it's not good. Um, the, I think this is also what the, the climate change um, conversation is, that it's really affecting our poverty issue. I mean, that's, a, that's also a good thing, a reason for us to celebrate we're part of the Paris Agreement. You know, we're here in this whole global movement to push for something that's deeply affecting our country. Talaga, because it's, it's affecting us economically. So it's not just an environmental issue, it's an economic poverty issue. And the ones who will really get hit the most are the farmers, your fisher folks, the indigenous people, the ones who have less you know, abilities to adapt to the changing climate. Concretely, what can the president commit, the government commit? I understand previously we had the 70% uh, commitment yes. across uh, industries. Mm -hmm. uh, but under the, the third administration, what's the commitment? Well, that's something we are looking at right now. Uh, the president has also looked at, um, well, the agreements or the discussions at the moment, it's still in the process, is that we are going to look at really ad adaptation, climate change adaptation, considering we're a lot, we're one of the most vulnerable countries, and disaster risk reduction, as well as, of course, mitigation. But when we look at the mitigation or its emission reduction, we're going to put it in line with sustainable development goals. So it's just a matter of tweaking. There's a lot of co-benefits of uh, mitigation. Mitigation can actually, like renewable energy is cheaper than fossil fuel, so that one makes sense also economically. So there's so many win-wins that we're just highlighting at this point when you look at the new contribution that we're crafting. It's big talk, and I understand there's a need yes. to educate the public, particularly the youth. Um, as far as the youth, is concerned, the National Youth Commission, um, what do you plan to further deepen the, the discussion and to, to tell young people that they can in fact be part of efforts to reduce in the National Emission. Youth Commission, we're planning to conduct provincial youth fairs mm -hmm. on which uh, we will be having a booth for the disaster risk reduction management trainings and also climate change adaptation trainings that the youth can be involved or can help on uh, climate change uh, issues like this. It's good because the framework is clear. You're not just talking about climate change, you're also talking about disaster, disaster. preparedness, which are um, interlinked. So um, it's good that the youth is participating. I recall um, when we uh, operate Agos, our disaster yes. preparedness platform. Young people volunteer, mm -hmm. um, and the National Youth Commission, I hope, can still be part of it. Yes, uh, of course. Moving forward, now PH, um, how do you plan to expand this? Uh, we have two major events mm -hmm. this year. We have the hashtag now PH SIL, mm -hmm. and we have the hashtag now ASEAN. Mm -hmm. Now ASEAN, it's very important because we are hosting the, the ASEAN summit. Um, yes. and and then what's, what's the, what are the prospects in the region in terms of expanding the reach of the movement? Um, what's your sense of the young people in other parts of yes, the hashtag now the ASEAN region? Conference. Uh, the hashtag now ASEAN is a conference mm -hmm. which will be participated by our foreign youth leaders mm -hmm. uh, coming from the ASEAN member states and mm -hmm. of course our local youth leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, on this conference, they will uh, come up on, an, on a work plan on which they can also adapt the hashtag now PH campaign on their own countries. Mm -hmm. And also, we want the ASEAN community to adopt the uh, Youth in Climate Action Day, mm -hmm. which is on November 25. We want them also to celebrate. And we want to also have a, an ASEAN Youth in Climate Action Day. It's good that you pointed that out because in Indonesia, we have a bureau. Um, yes. And then we can, in fact, um, encourage yes. young people. It's a huge population. We had a campaign there when we were trying to save Mary Jane. And, um, and the campaign, hashtag Save Mary Jane, was successful there. We can replicate the, the efforts. But what can they learn from this experience, from the Philippine experience, um, the now PH experience? Building on what you've mm. mentioned, that um, all of these happened because of partnership. Mm. So I think that's one of the things that the now PH will be highlighting during the now ASEAN event this November. And at the same time, we would like to introduce another organization or another network. It's the Southeast Asian Youth in Climate Action Network, or SICAN, that will help us uh, facilitate the linkages and, of course, the transfer of knowledge and information among um, ASEAN member states, considering that every nation has... Um, Every nation has good practices on climate action and disaster risk reduction and management. So 
what we're envisioning is is a platform where the Philippines could share their experiences, but at the same time, we can also learn from the experiences of other countries. You're lucky. You're young. You were able to participate in the in the historic conference in Paris. Did you meet other young uh, groups there? Yes, you, uh, um, there are lots of Filipino youth participating in the conference of parties, and there are lots of active youth organizations who are. Every year, they're re really there discussing um, about climate issues and engaging themselves, immersing themselves in, in the negotiations. And I think the Climate Change Commission has facilitated the participation of young people in the negotiations. And the National Youth Commission has also um, uh, taken an active role in, in the negotiations. Let's be more concrete. Uh, we had this survey, young people, millennials. Mm -hmm. They have a high sense of volunteerism, yes. but um, you have to tell them w the platforms, mm -hmm. what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. I, I am not generalizing, but it's yeah. a study. So we have to be concrete. What exactly do we want them to, to do? Um, there are two main efforts as far as climate change, um, yeah. in, in, in fighting climate change. One is adaptation, the other is mitigation. Mm -hmm. um, in either case, what can they do? Exactly. We're adding a third one, though. Oh, disaster that? risk reduction. Ah, that's <laughs> good that you pointed it out. Yeah, just to make sure, earlier. because oh. I think that um, we, we also have to look at like volunteerism mm -hmm. for the youth, and climate change is definitely interrelated with disaster mm -hmm. risk reduction. Sorry, let's start with adaptation. Okay. Well, adaptation work that they can do. The usual thing that we'd look at is um, planting the trees, fixing, putting the mangroves up. Secretary Lopez has been one of the biggest advocates also for that. But I think what's also important is really coming up with more climate resilient livelihoods. If you're looking at you're looking at long droughts, mm -hmm. then I would even encourage entrepreneurship when it comes to the climate change. We have to look at this as this is now our new future. It's going to be warmer temperatures. What can we do? There's also been a lot of entrepreneurship um, movements among the youth where they come up with like more early hazard warning systems, like mapping devices. I mean, these are they're instead of like being a victim of it, they try to take advantage of it. Or perhaps they can come up with structures that are more resilient to all of these extreme weather events. So these are things that. Um, we would like to really encourage the youth to look at like take the reality of an increasing temperature hopefully we will do as much as we can to reduce this but how can we take advantage of it i'm trying to look at it from a positive perspective instead of just like oh let's prevent the losses but it's like okay let's actually gain from it um, i'm shifting that perspective okay. before we discuss mitigation sure. let's discuss, uh, let's discuss uh, disaster preparedness risk yes. reduction because it's related um, what exactly can they do? Uh, yesterday, when I yeah. attended the awards, um, the Climate Reality Awards, when Senator Lorne Legarda spoke, um, I think her call was for the Climate Change Commission to uh, go down the line to the ground okay. and um, in, enable the communities to access the funds, for instance, to capacitate them, to build their, their, their capacity, among others. Um, yes. How are you going to? Is this? Are you talking about the People Survival yeah, yeah. Fund? Mm -hmm. Well, we yes, we do have the People Survival Fund. Actually, yes, the youth can probably also access mm -hmm. this. But it's a we have one billion pesos a year. Mm -hmm. um, that's Which was not spent. We've okay. spent some, some two really? projects. Okay. We've we've approved two projects. Mm -hmm. The concern right now is that the. We actually have quite a number of proposals, but not all of them are fitting to the requirements. So we really have to still capacitate the, right now it's mostly local government mm. units on how to prepare these proposals as well. But young people, young groups can? Can also, you know, yes, they just have to get some accreditation. So that's also an interesting, mm -hmm. usually because we go local government units, but we're also opening it up to different organizations. Um, how about uh, the, uh, the National Youth Commission? Are there particular uh, initiatives on the ground which you can support? Uh, we're tapping the LGUs also. Uh, we're, we're have, we will be relaunching our YORP, which is the Youth Organization Registration Program, on which uh, we can tap organizations sa grassroots natin, na kung saan uh, they can also have their disaster risk reduction management trainings, mm, we can oh. assist them technically, mm. uh, we can give them support mm. on which what, what module to use, mm. sa mga ganun bagay. Malaki ang papel ng kabataan kasi yeah. Tuwing bagyo, bago nga mag-evacuate, nag-selfie na kung ano yung yes, yes. <laughs> ano kanilang situation. Which, in a sense, it's data, it's information which our responders need. Um, mitigation. 
for mitigation, as part of our Now PH campaign, we introduced the 15 Ways to Low Emission Development Strategy. And as mentioned by Secretary Vernice, um, one of the ways to mitigate climate change is, is of course, to grow a tree. Um, uh, we can also use renewable energy, um, energy efficiency and conservation are also part of it. And maybe environmental awareness could be part of both adaptation and mitigation as a, strat as a strategy. So um, we've talked to a lot of youth organizations and we saw how these organizations are really interested with the opportunities that climate change brings. So I think that's one of the um, strong messages that the Now PH brought in 2015, that other than, of course, climate change is a threat, we emphasize that there are also opportunities that come along, come along with it. It's good that you pointed out uh, mm -hmm. planting trees, among other initiatives, mm -hmm. because um, uh, at Rappler, we, we have this platform mm -hmm. called um, Carbon Footprint Calculator. Mm -hmm. um, dito makikita mo sa household level mm -hmm. kung ano yung iyong ini-emit na na the carbon. Mm -mm. Uh, sino pang pinaka-best na dapat i-test natin kung hindi yung head ng Climate Change Commission? <laughs> Let's... Parang being placed on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Tingnan natin yung household natin ni yung Secretary kung footprint. ano ang kanyang... Um, kung kung carbon kung, intensive. Uh, walang carbon <laughs> shaming dito. Ano. <laughs> Pero uh, but just to give them, um, you know, the, way, the various means kung paano mm -hmm. ma-calculate ma yeah. yung carbon at sa kung paano ka... Uh, mag-offset or makakatulong mm -hmm. para mag-reduce ng emission. Okay. It's called the Household Carbon Footprint Calculator. Um, it's being shown. Pwede kayong uh, mag-join yung mga nasa bahay <laughs> na nanonood or na-traffic ngayon. Um, I-Google nyo lang, Household Carbon Footprint Calculator, Rappler. And this will pop. Let's begin. Okay. Let's click. Let's you begin. begin yeah. <laughs> Tingnan natin. Tingnan natin. First natin. question. Okay. Meron ka bang TV. May time yes. po manood ng TV. Okay. <laughs> okay, no, ilan? That's a very valid question. <laughs> May time ka na ba? Oh, next. One. Ilan? Unplug. Okay. Uh, I put one TV na. So oh, do I, you unplug your TV? Yes. After using, are you, you sure? To. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. May desktop ka ba? Yes. Okay. Ilan? One only. One. Okay. Sa office nyo, naka-desktop pa rin ba kayo? Laptop na Laptop ako. Na. Yeah. You unplug oh. your desktop Do you unplug? after using them. Okay. Yes. Um, yan, it explains yung um, electricity consumption na nag i ng carbon. Isang major greenhouse gas um, para sa hindi pa familiar ano, sa mga terms. Okay, number three question. For okay. ventilation, anong okay. ginagamit niyo At ilan ang meron? Electric fan? Aircon? Mainit Dito ngayon? Dito medyo, sorry. Mm -hmm. May aircon din ako. So, yes. <laughs> okay. For ventilation, ito yung um, yeah. number three. Ano? Number four. Medyo marami-rami ito. Um, rundown. Mga appliances sa inyong um, kitchen. Okay. Do you cook? When I can. <laughs> but I eat out a lot of times. Not good. Ref. Microwave. Okay. okay. Electric stove. Yung mga iba dyan, pwede kayong mag-test nito. Rice cooker. Okay, zero na. Water dispenser. And then click, click yes. yung next button. Number five, what do you usually take when going to school? Or work. Or work. A car. Car. Okay. Ilan ng cars mo? Hmm. Just, because uh, I live oh, Lifestyle myself, check so. na rin to. <laughs> <laughs> One. Ah, okay. Okay. What do you usually take when going to school or uh, work? Work. Gas. So it's yeah. a gasoline okay. car. Okay. How long does it take you to How reach? How long does it take for you to reach your destination? Sa yung office na ngayon ng Climate Change? Dati sa May Malacanang. Mm -hmm. Ang main office namin ngayon mm -hmm. na sa North Avenue, maganda. Mm -hmm. In the Parks and Wildlife Center. May lake po kami sa likod. <laughs> so Pwede bisitahin yan ng mga... Anytime. Anytime. Paano ba yun? Less than an hour. Pwede mong point five. Okay, that's good. Sa rock, no? Dati, grabe yung traffic kung pupunta kami <laughs> sa <laughs> Malacanang. Okay. Number so, six. carbon footprint ka dito. Number six. Alam ba natin na pati yung waste ay nag i ng um, carbon? How much waste do you throw away in a week? Yan. Okay. Food. Tingnan natin kung ano yung diet ni Secretary. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> natin na yun, yeah. Is that how much weight I also gain? Waste nyo sa food, paper din, wood. Baka tingin ko garden. maliit lang yung paper. Parang halos wala eh. Last two or three. Two. Zero. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. 
your household emits a total of ilang tinan natin pinapakita ba Nakikita ilang kilogram mm -hmm. 211.96 kilograms mm -hmm. carbon dioxide per month for that mm -hmm. ilan ang trees na yung dapat itanim secretary 26 trees mm -hmm. must be planted because mm -hmm. each tree can capture 8 kilograms of co2 annually yeah yeah that's it Okay. Kayo rin, itryan nyo rin yes. sa inyong bayan at sa kayo ibang nanonood ngayon. So, I, I will, will hold you accountable. Babalikan ka na. So, nakaplanta <laughs> naka ko ng 26 trees. trees. Pero Voltaire, I forget, mm -hmm. I, we weren't able to mention, we're trying to, um, before we close mm -hmm. though, because now that the Paris Agreement is in force for the Philippines, is where we have to operationalize this and we're really encouraging all the youth, in fact, in 3.6 million Filipino youth that we have in the initial Now PH campaign, we're targeting to increase this to 10 million. Aside from the Now PH ASEAN, we're also looking at the Now PH SEAL, which means that it's a movement where we're now enjoining, actually asking all the youth to recruit their friends and family members, cousins, um, to join and do something for the climate and it's not just sign up now before the way we're looking at signing up um, we're pushing for the paris agreement now it's like okay let's go for climate action so ito po yung pagdating sa um reducing like reducing even unplugging appliances diba? energy if using energy efficiency appliances taking a bike i would like to encourage the youth to bring their friends and say oh mag bike na lang tayo to school so i mean these are things that we'd like to encourage Re recycling all of our all of our ways so i think sana that we'd like to also impart today it's earth day you know let's do all of this climate action from you know, from all of our different youth, and let's expand this 3.6 million to not just signature, but 10 million people doing climate actions. And Voltaire, sige, one climate action. Ako nagplant na ako ng tree today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'll also <laughs> ask you. <laughs> <laughs> ako nagplant na ako last uh, um, sa Bicol last uh -oh. month. But, uh, Pero may 25 trees pa ako ulit to offset my emissions. Pero I, and I planted my ceremonial tree today for Earth Day. Okay, dapat i-replicate yan ng mga kapatid. Ang daming mga um, tree planting na nangyayari ngayon. Kahapon mm -hmm. I was just talking to a priest. Yeah. Uh, meron sila namang efforts sa Cebu. Mm -hmm. um, dahil doon yung kanilang issue naman ay um, coal mm -hmm. at iba pang mga threats sa uh, environment. Um, dito sa Manila naman may climate walk. Were you part of that, the climate walk? So, we were part in the previous um, initiatives. Mm -hmm. I think that was with Greenpeace. Mm -hmm. We had uh, uh, we worked with them in in their initiatives uh, in Tacloban. Mm -hmm. There was a workshop for for young people to incorporate music and arts with um, climate change concerns. And I think mm -hmm. in the uh, side side mm -hmm. and source story that was also the theme of the Now PhD last year, mm -hmm. inspired by of course. Chair Isa's um, directive and of course um, uh, Commissioner Dong Dante's directive. War, directive uh, since they're both in the entertainment mm -hmm. industry. Yeah, and we have to uh, mm -hmm. to to involve everyone. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the youth is concerned, your parting shot. Um, mm -hmm. Now, why now PH, and why now ASEAN? And <laughs> bakit? <laughs> bakit dapat nilang yeah. adapt? No? I think it's very mm -hmm. timing mm -hmm. for us to uh, level it up mm -hmm. for. Uh, to make it the now ASEAN because aside from our chairmanship for the ASEAN this year, uh, Philippines is known talaga sa mga initiatives na ganito sa ASEAN level. So I think it's about time. I think from the uh, name itself now PH not on our watch Philippines, the Filipino youth should really take the forefront, the front row in saying that we won't let climate change affect, deteriorate our future, especially the next generation to come. So um, this is the right time. We all have, the institutions are very supportive of young people's participation to climate action and disaster resilience. And I think we all have um, the right opportunity. This, we, we have the momentum to propel this campaign, this movement further and engage other young people in our advocacy. Thank you, and finally, Secretary. Why not on my watch? Mm -hmm. Why now? I think, well, climate change will affect, yes, definitely the youth the most. So I, the youth are, will then have to stand up and take the leadership when it comes to protecting their future. This is 
you know, this is, um, and they have so much power. Eh? They have about, we have about 30 million youth mm -hmm. here in the, Filipino, in the Philippines, and the Filipino youth in particular are most vulnerable. Hopefully, though, we can take on that leadership stance now as we lead also the ASEAN countries. Okay, it's, let's yeah. do that. Thank you for joining us. We've Thank been talking you. to Secretary Vernice Victorio, um, Commissioner Paul Pangilinan, and Pebble Sanchez of Now PH. Thank you very much and happy Earth Day. Happy, happy Earth, Earth Day. Day. And happy Paris Agreement. Um. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Walter Tupas. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.